Hi again and welcome to NSS and this is the Reynolds Report. Checking weather around the globe for you in Toronto, mostly cloudy with scattered showers today and a high near 26 degrees. More of that for tomorrow, looking a whole lot better for the weekend though. In Rome, just spectacular with lots of sunshine and into the low 30s. Tokyo, pretty nasty flooding there causing huge headaches the last few days. Clouds today and around 25 degrees, things really start to dry out by the weekend. Sydney has mostly sunny today and tomorrow, highs near 20 degrees. And in Los Angeles, the beautiful weather continues, lots of sunshine and warm with highs around 25 degrees. Speaking of Los Angeles, the Kings could not finish the job last night, losing to the Rangers 2-1 in Game 4 of the Stanley Cup Final. Back to L.A. for Game 5 tomorrow night. Game 4 of the NBA Final goes tonight. The Spurs ahead two games to one. And the World Cup, or as we like to call it, a three-week commercial for Coca-Cola, begins today in Brazil. Croatia and Brazil in the opening match. By the way, the Google Doodle is soccer themed today. You can play a little footy while you're at work this afternoon. Wow! Thousands of naked cyclists poured into the streets of Portland, Oregon this past Saturday night for the 11th annual World Naked Bike Ride. Yep, it's a protest that promotes bike riding as an alternative to driving cars. Now, nude cyclists with lights flashing in their tire spokes rang bells as they barreled down the avenues lined with cheering spectators. The rides are held in more than 75 U.S. cities and in more than 20 other countries. But Portland's is believed to be the largest, with more than 8,000 participants this year. Unlike events in other cities, the Portland ride works with local police being considered as a protest. Officers direct traffic during what is generally a trouble-free event. I don't know about you, but I ride with pants on and get blisters and saddle sores. Can't even imagine riding naked. Okay, there's this guy on Facebook who tried to play the numbers game to find a date. He's failed dramatically after apparently being rejected, are you ready for this, 5,000 times. Pre-drag Jovanovic had employed the strategy in the hopes of finding a partner, but was really disappointed when most of the women he contacted simply didn't reply. He only got 15 responses, and they were all negative, while the rest of the women he contacted simply ignored him. Jovanovic vowed to continue his quest to find a woman online because he said he has little choice as the women in his hometown near Belgrade were either married or grandmothers. He also admitted that he was shy and found speaking to the opposite sex through the internet a whole lot easier. I know I risk getting into the record books as the biggest Facebook loser of all time, but it's worth the risk. Thank God this guy has a Porsche and a Porsche vanity plate. I wasn't quite sure if he was a douche or not. You guys? Okay, this is pretty cool. Director J.J. Abrams wants Star Wars fans to donate money to UNICEF for a chance to appear in his upcoming film, Star Wars Episode 7. Now, fans can donate as little as 10 bucks and as much as $50,000 for a chance to be flown to London, get behind-the-scenes access on the set of Episode 7, meet the cast, and be transformed into a Star Wars character that will appear in the upcoming film. Pretty cool, but I don't know about you, I think there are just way too many fake futurists out there these days. When I hear someone describe themselves as a futurist, I assume all this means is that they watch Star Wars in their mom's basement. Here's some pop culture milestones today that will make you feel ancient. David and Victoria Beckham celebrate their 15th wedding anniversary this summer. John Yu's classic movie 16 Candles was released 30 years ago. So was Prince's Purple Rain. The TV series Sex in the City ended its run a decade ago along with NBC's Friends. 27-year-old Kurt Cobain committed suicide 20 years ago and Outkast dropped their album Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music 20 years ago. Feeling old? Okay, this is interesting. A big Major League Baseball milestone being celebrated today. It was June 12, 1970. It was the high point in the baseball career of one of the finer pitchers of his time, and arguably one of the greatest achievements in the history of sports. It's the day that the great Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher Doc Ellis claims he threw a no-hitter while high on LSD. The Pirates won the game 2-0, Ellis walked eight batters, and claimed he couldn't even see the catcher through most of the game. Doc says, I was in Los Angeles and the team was playing in San Diego, but I didn't know it. I had taken LSD, I thought it was an off day. That's how come I had it in me. 
I took the LSD at noon. At 1 p.m., his girlfriend and trip partner looked at the newspaper and said, Doc, my God, you're pitching today. She rushed me to the airport for the quick flight, got there at 4.30. It was game time at 6 p.m. Pretty amazing. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll catch you back here tomorrow. A quick reminder that The Big Fat Stone, that's the newest movie starring Frank D'Angelo and totally solid with the critics, co-starring Robert Loggia, Nick Mancuso, and Margot Kidder, premieres Sunday at the Italian Contemporary Film Festival. We'll see you there. Even a tiny drop of water can make a splash. It's the biggest news. This emerald is the most precious stone in the world. To the left, there's an exit, but you go the other way to the right. right. Make sure you deactivate any motion detector. Right. There's a computer in front of the computer at the bottom. Right. Is a, listen to me. We're all the same. It's just the way you play the game, right? If I'm lying, I'm dying. It's me, Eddie Riesel. We're partners. Who besides you knew that this gem was going to be delivered? <laughs> I got you. I got you, Rossi. Not my house, mother. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. You're not very good at this. Sometimes you have to look inward to see what you are really all about.